Hi there, everybody. Welcome to our vodcast on calculating density, mass, and volume. Now, this vodcast is in preparation for the New York State 8th grade intermediate science exam, where we have to calculate these different properties of matter. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at how to calculate them and the tricks and tips that you can use to help you to remember those formulas. We have to calculate density, mass, and then volume. Now, as you can see, you have all these equations here, these three equations, which can be a handful to remember on your own. But the trick that we use is this. We like to use what's called the DMV triangle. Okay, the DMV triangle is all you have to use in order to remember the different formulas. And this is how it works. First of all, when you set up the triangle, just make sure you put the mass at the top. Put M at the top. It doesn't matter if you put D or V, but just put the mass at the top, and you'll see why in a moment. And then at the bottom, just put a multiplication sign like an X between the two bottom letters. And this is how it works. When I'm asked to calculate density, I'm using this triangle. All I'm going to do is cover up the value that they're asking me to calculate for. And what I'm left with is the equation for density. So if I take a look here, I have mass over volume. If I take a look at my equations here, density is mass over volume, which is mass divided by volume. If I go to mass and they ask me to calculate for that, all I have to do is cover up the M for mass in my triangle, and then I have density times volume, which is the exact equation for mass. And then lastly, one of my volume equations that I have to use is if they give me a mass and density, I have to be able to find volume. So simply, just like the other two, I'm going to cover up the V, and that gives me mass over density, which is mass divided by density. So the reason why you need to put the mass at the top is because if you notice in these two equations for volume and density, mass is always in the numerator or in the top number. So make sure you put your M at the top here. Okay, so those are the top three equations that you should know, but this second equation for volume is pretty important too. Now, you may not be given mass or density to find the volume of an object, but you may be given dimensions like length, width, and height. So you may remember from math, volume is also equal to length times the width times the height, or L times W times H. So this is a second equation you can use to solve for volume. And we'll take a look and see how this works out later. So let's take a look at some practice questions and how to solve them. All right, so here I have my practice question sheet. And these are going to be your notes, so you can just copy along as I fill this out. So when we take a look here, we have our equation. We fill out our DMV triangle, make sure we have that all squared and set. And this way we can have all of our equations that we need. The only one you really have to remember is the length times width times the height. Now, on this test, whenever you calculate something, there's two things that you always have to remember. First, you have to remember your units, your units, and your units. Do not forget to put those in. You will lose easy points for that. Second of all, they'll ask you to round your answers to the nearest tenths place. So that's one space after the decimal. Make sure you do that because if you get the question right, you don't want to lose a point for something as silly as that. Now, we'll get to what the units are in a moment, and you'll see how you can figure them out as you... Um, solve the equations. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve four types. Our first one here says it gives us the mass, gives us density, and then we have to find the volume. Now this equation is, this question is laid out in a list as opposed to a word problem, but in the word problem they would tell you an object has a mass of 6.3 grams, its density is 5.2 grams per cubic centimeter, what is the volume? So it's not much different. So when you find out what it is that you have to solve for, you go up to your DMV triangle and you figure it out. I have to solve for volume, so I cover up volume, and that leaves me with mass over density. So I know my formula is volume is equal to mass over density. Once I have that all set up, it's just a matter of plugging in numbers, and that's the work that we use in science. So volume is equal to, they tell me my mass is 6.3, grams, that's my unit for mass, and they tell me my density is 5.2 grams per cubic centimeter. And we'll find out what that means in a little bit. All right, when you're ready to do your math, this is what you need to do to find out your units. Once you set up your problem and you filled in the information on your sheet and you've put in the units and, you, and your proper decimal places, it pays to be thorough because now that I have my units in here, I can see that well, I have two grams. So grams will cancel out, and that leaves me with cubic centimeters. 
You didn't have to actually memorize that unit because they gave it to you. And if you just remember to cancel out the, the like units or the same repeating units, then you know whatever's left over is what you have until we solve for density. So once you figure that out, once you set up your math, you take your calculator, and all you're going to do is you're going to type it in just as you read it on the paper. Okay, you're going to type in 6.3. Let's turn it on first. You're going to type in 6.3 divides, that's what that line means, 5.2 and hit equals. Now our answer comes out to 1.2, 1, 1, 1, 5, 3, 8, and so forth. But remember, they want us to measure it to the tenths or round it to the tenths. So we have to give them a number in the first decimal place. So you go to your basic rules of rounding. You take a look at your whole number, you leave it there, one, and then you have to take a look at your tenths place and see if it's rounded up or keep it the same. So when you take a look at the number after that, the rounding rules apply. Five and above, you round up to the next number. Four and below, you keep it the same number. So since this one is less than five, I'm not rounding that number, so it gives me my answer as 1.2 cubic centimeters. And it's as simple as that. It's just a matter of reading what you have and plugging it all in. So let's go and do the rest of them. Mass. They want me to find mass. They give me density and they give me volume. So if I forget the equation, I cover up mass, and I see that I have density times volume. So that's the equation I'm going to write in. Mass is equal to density times volume. I'm going to put in my work. So again, I'm going to do mass is equal to, my density is 2.4 grams per cubic centimeter times 10.0 cubic centimeters. And again, if you don't remember your units for these equations, then just take a look at the ones that repeat themselves. I have cubic centimeter here, I have cubic centimeter here, they cross out, and that gives me grams left over. Now it's just a matter of doing the multiplication. So I take my calculator again, clear that out, and we do 2.4 times 10.0. Okay? And it gives us a number of 24. Now you might be thinking, well, why do you have to use a calculator for that? Because sometimes it's better safe than sorry. Maybe you have it, but maybe you make a mistake. I always encourage my kids to use their calculators to prevent that from happening. Now, we get a nice even whole number of 24 here, as you can see right there. Okay. However, that's not good enough to leave. You can't leave it as just 24 because in the directions, they ask us for a tenths place. So you have to put a number after the decimal. Well, if it's an even 24, then the only number that can go there is zero. So your answer is going to be 24.0 grams. So let's move on to density now. We type, find our formula, density again. I'm going to cover up the D, and it gives me M over V. So my formula is D equals M over V, and I plug in my work. D is equal to 10.0 grams, which is what I found there, divided by 2.5 cubic centimeters. Now at this point you might be thinking, well there are no like units, there's nothing to cancel out, there's nothing to cross out, what am I going to do? Well you're going to do nothing, you're going to write it just as you see it, you're going to write it as grams over cubic centimeter. If you can't cross it out, don't try to. And at this point you just do your math, you take your calculator again and you type in, start off with the numerator, 10.0, divided by 2.5 equals, and it gives us another whole number of four. And as we said before, you can't write it as four because they want a tens place number there, so you write it as 4.0, okay? So those are the easy equations to solve. They're pretty simple because they're pretty straightforward. However, you're going to come up to an equation that's not gonna have all the information that you think you might be looking for, that you're giving it to you in a different way. So that's what this last equation is about. So if we take a look, this equation is asking us to solve for density. So again, we cover up our D, and that gives us D is equal to M over V. And when you start doing your work, this is going to start to fall into place, but fall apart soon after. I have my density that I'm solving for. They give me my mass of 336.0 grams. And I'm like, okay, I need volume. 
Well, I take a look here, and I don't see anything written under volume. So this is where they might trick you. They do give you the volume, but you have to do another step. Remember this equation up here? Volume is equal to length times width times height. Although they don't give you the volume straight up, they give you the information you need to solve it. So what you need to do is you need to take that equation, volume is equal to length times width times height, to solve for the volume. That's pretty simple. Volume is equal to the length of 10.0 centimeters times 8.4 centimeters times 4.0 centimeters. Okay? And all we have to do at that point is the math. Remember, centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared, and then a third centimeter side is going to be centimeters cubed. So that's why this volume is centimeters cubed, because you've measured three sides in centimeters and multiplied them together. And to solve for it, all we're going to do is type in 10.0 times 8.4 times 4.0 equals. And that gives us a volume of 336 grand, uh, cubic centimeters. And once we have our volume, it's a matter of plugging it in now. We have V, so let's put in this answer right over there. We have 336 grams here. I'm sorry, cubic centimeters. Well, we don't have to punch this into the calculator, but I don't want to be a hypocrite. We have 336 grams divided by 336 cubic centimeters, right there, equals a density of 1.0. And remember, you can't cancel these out, so your unit's going to be grams per cubic centimeter. And that's how you go about solving your basic density mass volume equations. The next part that we're going to talk about in this video is how to determine the density of an object by looking at its flow in a cup of water. So let's take a look at that right now. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the skills that you have to know is to determine the density of an object by watching it float in a cup of water. Now, there's a few easy rules to remember here. First of all, you need to know the density of water because that's what you're going to be comparing the density of the object to. So the density of water, as you can see, is 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, whether you have a big pool, swimming pool of water, or a small drop of water, that water, as long as it's fresh and not filled with anything, is going to be 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, the objects of finding out about density is this. First of all, as we learned earlier this year, if an object's density is more than the surrounding environment, then that material is going to sink. So, for example, if we have an object's density that is more than 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter, which is the density of water, it will then sink to the bottom. So if we take a look at this block over here, this block has got a density of 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter. If we were to place this block into the water, what would then happen is that block would sink to the bottom of the cup. And it won't sink part of the way, it's going to sink completely to the bottom. Just like when a boat sinks, it sinks to the bottom. Because this block's density is two tenths or 0.2 grams per cubic centimeter more than 1.0, it's going to sink. And this will be the same if the density is 1.1. As long as the object's density is greater than 1.0, it's going to sink to the bottom of the cup of water. Now, if an object's density is less than 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter, what will happen is that it will float in the water, which means if the object's density is less than that, it's not going to be dense enough to sink, so the water is going to be able to support it. So, for example, here, this block has a density of 0.5 grams per cubic centimeter. So, if we were to place this block into the water, then what would happen is the block would float. Being that the water is more dense, and we know that the more dense material goes to the bottom, the water stays down here and supports the block above it. Now, one thing that you should always remember is the block will never do this. It will never be suspended, like midway between the top or the surface of the water and the bottom of the cup. Whenever you take a look at something, you will never see this. And if you're ever asked to draw an answer, please do not draw this answer. So that's a general rule of the object's density. Greater than one sinks to the bottom. Less than one floats at the top. Now, if an object floats to the top, 
then you're going to have to be able to figure out what its density is. So there's a couple of rules here that you should know. Whether you're drawing a block in the water or you have to determine the density of a block by looking at it in the water, there's a simple rule to follow here. So if you calculate a density of a block and you have to draw it in a cup of water, this is the magic rule you should follow. Okay, the number after the decimal is equal to the percentage of the block in the water. So for example, the density of this block is calculated to be 0.75 grams per cubic centimeter. Now if we take a look at this number here after the decimal, 75, this is going to be equal to the percentage of the block inside the water. So since the density is 0.75, then 75% of the block will be in the water. Now if the density is 0.50 or 0.50, then 50 percent of the block would be in the water. Now if the density was 0.25 or 0.25, that would mean 25 percent of the block is in the water. So remember, whatever density you calculate less than one is going to be equal to the percentage of the block in the water. If it's greater than one, it's all going to go to the bottom, whether it's 1.1 or 10.0. So there's nothing to worry about there. Now the opposite, if you have to look at a block floating in the water, you can determine its density. So we're just going to do the reverse of what we just talked about. When you have to determine the density of the block by looking at it in the water, all you have to do is remember the percentage of the block in the water is the number after the decimal. In this example here, we have roughly about 25% of the block submerged in the water, which means the density is going to be 0.25 grams per cubic centimeter. If we had 50% of the block in the water, then our density would be 0.50. And if we had 75% of the block floating in the water, then our density would be 0.75. Those are two easy tricks to remember. And then lastly, trickier one, this will help you avoid what we talked about earlier about drawing the block suspended in the middle. If a block's density is equal to 1, then it just floats below the surface. So kind of remember this. If it's equal to 1, 100% 1 just floats below the surface. Greater than 1, it sits at the bottom of the cup. Less than 1, whatever percentage of the block is in the water is the density of that block. Okay, and those are the tips and tricks that you need to know. Always remember, water's density is 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter. If the density of an object is bigger than 1.0, then it's heavier and it sinks. And if it's less than 1.0, that means the water is heavier, so it's going to hold up and cause the object to float. Okay, so let's move on and finish up this vodcast. We'll go and calculate a problem to find the density of an object and then how to draw it in a cup of water. Okay, everybody, so let's put this all together. What we're going to do today, or in this segment, is we are going to solve for the density of this block and then decide whether it sinks or floats, and if it floats, how much of the block is in the water. All right, so when we, whenever you start a, an equation or a problem like this and they ask you for density and volume, always make sure you fill out your density, mass, volume, triangle, or your DMV triangle. Remember, mass always goes at the top because it's always in the numerator of equations, and don't forget to put in your multiplication sign. So as we go through here, we have to solve for density. So to find our equation for density, we're just going to cover, cover up the D, and that's going to give us density is equal to mass divided by volume. Then we also have to find the volume of the block. Well, we don't have the density to do that because remember, if you cover this up, we have mass divided by density. Although they give us the mass of the block, we have to solve for density, so we can't use density to solve the volume equation this way. So remember, they do give us a block with three sides. A side that's its length, its width, and its height. So to solve for the volume of that block, we're just simply going to use length times width times height. Now that being said, we can go ahead and solve for the density of the sample below, and then we're going to have to draw where the block will be located if placed into a cup of water. So we're going to have to know whether it sinks or floats, and if it floats, how much of the block is floating in the water itself. So why don't we get everything started? Always write down the formulas that you need. So as we did on the top, my density formula is density equals mass over volume. And I'm going to have to use my volume equation to solve 
for volume. Length times width times height. Now we can start filling in information just to keep ourselves organized here. So again, we're solving for density, so D equals, they give us the mass right here, and it's 13.5 grams. But in order to solve for density, we need volume. And that is not given to us, as I pointed out earlier, so we're simply going to solve for volume. So volume is equal to the length of an object, which here is three centimeters, times the width of an object, which is here three centimeters, and then how tall or the height of an object, which again is three centimeters. Now all we're going to do is take our handy dandy calculator and do the math. All right. Now many of you might think, well I could just do this in my head and that will be done with and it will be quicker that way, but again, it never hurts to be safe using the calculator. So we're going to do 3 times 3 times 3. And that gives us a volume of V equals 27.0 cubic centimeters. So remember, it's cubic centimeters because, or CM3 because I've measured three dimensions in centimeters. So that is my volume. Now that I have my volume, I'm ready to rock and roll in solving this density equation. So remember your units. When you solve for density, there's no units that can cancel out one another, so you're going to write both units, grams per cubic centimeter. That's our unit for density. So let's just make sure that when we do that, we have it correct. Now, the next thing we have to do is simply just punch it into the calculator. And again, you're always going to punch it in from top to bottom. So 13.5 divided by 27.0 equals, and it gives us a nice easy density of 0 0.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, so at this point, we have to figure out, will this object float or sink in the cup of water? Remember, objects with the density bigger than one, because the density of water is 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter. So if the object's density is greater than one, it would sink to the bottom. If it's less than one, then it's going to float at or near the surface. So you have to compare your density to the density of water. And as we can see, 0 0.5 is half of 1.0. So this density is less than water. So now we got to figure out, now that we know that it floats, we have to figure out how much of the block is floating. As I said before, always remember that the number after the decimal point is equal to the percentage of the block in the water. So that being said, if we wrote the density out like this, 0 0.50, because there's no other number there, then this would equal 50% of the block in the water. And that's how I'm going to draw my block. So I'm simply going to go over here to my cup of water, as illustrated, and do the best I can to draw a block that's evenly spaced, or has half of it out of the water and half it inside the water. Now, you don't have to be exact when you have to put your answers here, but you have to be close enough so if we eyeball it, we can say, yeah, that's about a half. Okay? And then sometimes you can write the percentage in there, just to be clear. Okay? And that's it. That's how you solve an equation for, you, for density and then placing that object in the... And that's it. That's how you solve a problem for density using the volume equals length times width times height equation and the determining whether the object sinks or floats in the water and if it does float, how much of it floats actually or sits inside the water. Okay, I hope you found that clear. I hope you found that easy. Thank you for your time.